Where we meet. My name is Mary, also known as Lady Neptes of Universal Pagan Temple. I'm here today to talk to you about the magical cat and why cats are so important to us today and to paganism and Wicca. Now, the cat was domesticated around uh, 7500 BCE, and then the ancient Egyptians took it further with the raising of the Egyptian Mao. Now, the Egyptian Mao is the oldest of all cat breeds, obviously, being one of the first. It's the only cat that's spotted, among a few others that are also spotted, among the domestic breeds of cats. Um, the Egyptians named the Mao after the sound that the cat obviously produces. Cow goes moo, cat goes meow. <laughs> um, so. I can't get away with a cat video and not talk about ancient Egypt, the goddesses, and the Egyptian cat customs. Now, as you probably are all aware, or may not be, when a cat passed away in Egypt, they were so distraught, they would, um, the family that owned the cat would shave their eyebrows in despair. Um, and then if you murdered a cat. That was a uh, capital offense, punishable by um, execution. Because cats were so treasured, they were the ones that killed the mice, that ate the grain, that was so hard to grow. And cats, the ancient Egyptians recognized the value of the cat very early on. And um, they also realized the value and the strength and the passion of the lions. Now, the first uh, um, goddess I will tell you about of the Egyptian pantheon is Bast, or Bastet. Uh, she is known as the devouring lady, the one of the daughters of Ra. Um, she's the goddess of home, fertility, and protection. Um, she is usually depicted with a sistrum which is kind of like a rattle. It is a rattle that uh, held in the hand, and it has a loop over it, and three bars with little uh, kind of weights in them. And it produces a rattling sound, obviously. Um, I wish to own one of these because they are they are amazing, and they are so closely symbolized the goddess, um, the, the loop shape on the sistrum is symbolized by the, uh, um, the orbit of the moon, and then the four rods represent the four elements, or so I've read. Um, and then, uh, yes, Baus was originally a lioness goddess, and then over time, she took the form of a domesticated cat. Now the other goddess I was going to tell you about is Sekhmet, the ancient Egyptian goddess of war and healing and pestilence and disease. Now you may think you're not familiar with her. Okay, she's the goddess of pestilence and famine, and then she's the goddess of healing. Uh, um, so, the reason behind that, she's originally a goddess of uh, famine and pestilence, but then her priests and priestess would pray to her, and Pharaoh would make offerings of statues in hopes that she would take away the disease, and then eventually her priests and priestess became surgeons. So, if you're going into surgery, you might want to pay the Sekhmet and ask for her mercy. Now, about Sekhmet, her breath is the desert. It's the burning blaze of the desert. It's also said that she breathes fire. And she is also a daughter of Ra. Now, the whole myth behind Sekhmet was that Ra was an old god. And humanity seeing that he's an old god, start to make fun of him. Well, Ra was like, I'm still in charge here. I'm going to take out my eye and send it down. 
the, uh, the I, is Sekhmet. So Sekhmet went on a rampage, nearly destroying humanity, exterminating them like no other. She bathed in their blood and just basically, literally annihilated humanity. And so Ra saw this and was like, I have to stop my own daughter. But how do I do that? And some myths, he goes to Toph, the ibis-headed god of wisdom. And Toph, seeing that she likes to drink blood, well, hey, pomegranates are the, are the color of blood when they're turned into wine. So let's fill a pool full of pomegranate wine. So they did so, and Sekhmet saw, oh, look, hey, it's a pool of blood. Yay! And it's free! I'm gonna go have some of that. So she drinks the wine, and then she becomes drunken, passes out, depending on the tradition or the myth cycle. She er either turns into Bast or Hathor, since she is pacified and no longer aggressive. Now another lesser known lioness goddess is uh, Pocket. Her name means um, she who scratches, uh, or night huntress, with sharp claws. She's depicted much the same way as Sekhmet, except with Sekhmet she's depicted uh, with a solar disk, and Pocket is not. Now another very important goddess is Tefnut, the goddess of moisture. She's depicted as a lioness. She is the um, the grandmother of uh, Isis and Nephthys and Osiris and Set, and the mother of uh, Newt and Geb. But when she was born with her twin brother and husband, Shu, they were born as two lion cubs. And that's um, the synopsis of the Egyptian. Um, basically a short overview. There are many more Egyptian um, cat gods and goddesses, or rather goddesses, rather. <laughs> um, and then I can't ignore other pantheons. Um, other cultures did not revere the cat as widely as the Egyptians did, but the, um, the Norse did have the goddess Freya, who had a chariot drawn by a two cats that are sometimes depicted as wild cats or bob cats. Um, and then uh, the goddess Hel, um, her priestess would wear um, cat skin clothes. And so I'm going to tell you about offerings to give to the goddesses that I just told you about. So Bost, she likes mirrors, perfumes, milk, make sure it's whole milk and organic. Um, chocolate, of course, all the gods love chocolate. <laughs> um, tea, cinnamon, um, certain types of incenses would be lavender um, or lotus, anything that smells sweet, calm, and relaxing. Um, stones to give her would be uh, amber, tiger's eye, and hematite. Now for segment, you might want to give her a little more. So she might have mercy on you and not use your body to wipe her floors and decorate them with blood. Um, <laughs> um, so um, offer her beer, red meat, um, pomegranates, blades, knives, swords, um, bloodstones, uh, sandalwood, tiger's eye. Um, now when I say sandalwood, I mean sandalwood incense, and uh, prayers to say to Bost, um, you know, you can always pull from the 42 negative confessions. Now for those of you who are not familiar um, with the 42 negative confessions, basically, you take the Ten Commandments and you stretch them out to 42, and you get the 42 negative confessions, which um, basically you have to go to, to the gods upon your death and state 
I have not done this, I have not done that. Basically state your innocence. So when your heart was weighed against the feather of my aunt, you wouldn't, you know, be eaten um, by the monster whose name eludes me at this moment. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue. It starts with an A. <laughs> um, he has the head of an alligator, body of a lion, and the uh, rear end of a hippopotamus. Um, and so, one of the uh, confessions is, um, Hail Bost, coming forth from the shrine, I do not eat my heart. I'm prepared to say the segment, which I like. Hail, bright flame, coming forth from Ptah's temple and Menifer. I do not dislike myself. Now that is a wonderful affirmation. If you have issues with uh, self-esteem, I do not dislike myself. And for Freya, um, you know, with all Norse gods, they like beer and they like meat. I've also found that she likes lavender incense.